Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. This episode from the meeting room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org. Porch Light Rental and Destination Services. Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs. Visit them at porchlightrental.com. Cube Monk, featuring the world's first smart cube. Track your goods with our advanced GPS system. Welcome to the future of moving and relocation at cubemonk.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by airs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at airs.com. Insured Nomads provides protection and peace of mind with health insurance, travel insurance, group, or tailored insurance for the globally mobile. Visit us at insurednomads.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Become a global player in your field. Cross Culture To Go provides virtual support for your global business and career success. We can help you thrive in 140 plus countries and markets. On the web at crossculturetogo.com. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers this great flexibility. And for the program owners of these sports leagues, it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need. They see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in, in our country and in other countries. But it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both. Okay, this is Ed Cohen in San Diego, California, and you're on Global TV Talk Show. This is a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. Please go check it out. Very special day today, a very special occurrence. We have with us two guys who are both business execs who have been impacted by Parkinson's disease. And so to give us more information, here's Larry Linton, coming to us from uh, Toronto area, and Hi. Mark Colo uh, in Southern California. Hello, Mark. Hello, Larry. Hello. I I'd rather be in Southern California today. But... <laughs> well, uh, but you know, I, I, it's been so long since I've been up in Toronto. Uh, I always love being there. 
Uh, right. the, uh, the vitality and the diversity, uh, to me, is exciting and inspiring. Right. Uh, okay, so uh, this show is all about information exchange, and um, our audience uh, will be worldwide over the next 12 months. And uh, in terms of numbers, I don't know. It could reach a million, but more likely uh, in the thousands. Uh, in any case, uh, our base is Fortune 1000 companies through uh, people, talent management, HR, everything related with talent management uh, from acquisition through mobility. So Mark Colo has been involved in the relocation industry forever. Uh, and has just recently taken a retirement, early retirement, I guess, <laughs> from Chipman relocation. And he's specialized in moving, relocating high value medical equipment uh, and people. Uh, Mark Colo, I know you're in a time constraint. Uh, Mark Colo uh, co founded 5013C called findcures.org and has since enlarged itself to findneurohelp.org. Hello, Mark, tell us more about Find Neuro Help. Oh, sure. Uh, let me step back just a little bit and talk about our parent company, uh, which is uh, Foundation Institute for Neurological Diseases. Uh, the the uh, AKA, AKA is Find, F-I-N-D. So that's our parent company. The, the DBAs that we have, we have two. We have the first one that we started was called Find Cures. And the focus on that was funding research that will, will find the shortest uh, shortcut, I guess, to get to, a, uh, get to a cure. So we were mainly working with universities and their research departments, other pri some other private groups on the outside of, of the university network, but primarily universities. So, um, and then what we, what, we, what we thought was, you know, we're having some good success with, with fine cures, but, but we're not really helping the individual. So we thought we need to get a, a service where we can help the individual and, and primarily right after the diagnosis. Because the diagnosis is, is not a happy day for, for a Parkinson's patient. So, and there's not a lot of support and there's not a lot of advocacy. So we recognize there was a void out there in terms of transitional support services to help that individual get past all the challenges and all, answer all the questions, all the concerns that they have about that, that new diagnosis. So that's what our, our, our focus is for our, our uh, fine, fine neural health organization. And Mark has uh, just published his second book. Why don't you just describe what the book title is and why you came up with that title? Okay, the book title is The Noble and Great Ones. And in that, in that title, The Sequence Matters, uh, the book talks in part about how people that do great deeds don't always do noble acts. Uh, but people that are noble on the, uh, at the first point will sometimes do tremendously great act, acts, acts because of their nobility. Some people, when they go after greatness uh, in, initially, is they'll never get to nobility because they, their head gets big and they get, you know, their, their, they get, their ego gets, gets blown out of proportion. And they end up doing some things that are not really um, ethical. So, uh, so that's, that's why the sequence of the words matters. It has to be nobility before greatness. Um, the title itself came from uh, a discovery in, in an Egyptian tomb outside the city of Lex Luxor. And an explorer named Ant Antonio Bolo was out there uh, just looking around for artifacts. And he, he made his way into a tomb that had about three or 400 uh, uh, mummies. Uh, and he was able to salvage about 10 or 11 of them. And he brought them back to the US and within, within the, the mummies were some scrolls and the scrolls were translated. And it was in those scrolls that that term noble and great ones was first, first found in, in, write, in written form. So that's where I, I got the, the title from. And the rest of the book is just about individuals who, who live noble and great lives. All right, so Mark, uh, you have to jump off in a few minutes. So why don't you tell Larry and our worldwide audience what you're going to be doing in a few minutes? Well, I've been invited to be a guest speaker um, at a group in San Diego uh, that's uh, called Aspen Neuroscience. And since yesterday was World Parkinson's Day, 
uh, they're going to have me speak kind of in honor of that, that day and in honor of, of helping patients such as I to uh, adjust to Parkinson's, to find med medications that will, will slow it down, and hopefully one day find a cure. So I'm, I'm really excited. It's, it's a company with about 35 employees, and uh, it's going to be a fun time. We're going to talk about all kinds of subjects, and I'm excited to, and honored to have that opportunity. I'm a strong advocate that we're, we will never be challenged uh, beyond what we're capable of enduring. Uh, but some of us will be taken to the limit, um, but we'll still be able to come through it, whatever, whatever challenge we have. And I think each challenge I had prepared me for something uh, even more difficult. So I'm at a point now when, when I had my diagnosis with Parkinson's, uh, I almost died that day. I mean, my, my mind was spinning. I felt the weight of the world was on my shoulders. I didn't know how I would be able to get past any of this. And, and I was spending all my time in the future and in the past looking for answers of why this happened. And I spent all my time in the future and the past, but forgot to stay in the present. And uh, I think it's important to, to stay in the present when these things happen. The Fine Cures, uh, we started out uh, as a 501c3, and we were targeted mainly on universities and research groups who were looking for cures for some chronic neurological diseases uh, and we've, we've written a number of checks to those organizations to help the, further their research. Um, then as time went on we thought you know we're doing some great things for the university in the research aspect. We want to help people. We want to be there to help people that get diagnosed with these diseases and give them some hope, give them some resources, and help them get back on their feet and have a, have a healthy mental perspective. So now our focus primarily is just helping individuals that have needs that they can't find uh, solutions for. Uh, so I think for me, the, the important thing in life is to recognize who you are, what your inner gifts and talents are. And once you find that out, then you can just, you're off to the races. So life can be tough. Uh, if you think things can't get worse, you're wrong. But I just want the viewers to know that there is no building greatness within you. And you can get through just about anything. And, uh, and look to God and, and bless other people's lives with the gifts and talents you've been given. They're not for you entirely. We have these gifts and talents to help others. And that's, that's probably my final message. Well, I want you to come back on Global TV Talk Show next week uh, or the week after when you're ready and tell us about that experience. I, I'd love to. Yeah, that'd be okay. great. So Larry Linton and I met around, uh, I guess, about 10 years ago. Uh, as I said, he's in Toronto. Uh, and uh, we, we met when he was very active in the global mobility world um, as a lawyer, as a partner in PwC Law in Toronto and immigration. He spoke at our meeting at Shopify and then in another meeting I did, I uh, uh, can't remember, I think at BMO uh, mm -hmm. and then another one somewhere else. <laughs> Welcome again, Larry. Yeah, thanks, Ed. It's good to see you and good to meet you, Mark. Ed, I think you're the only one of the few people that have seen me both in my corporate background and in my post corporate life. So it's, it's good to reconnect. Yeah, well, the last time we were together, I think we had lunch at the Hotel Delta or something. Then downtown. Yes, that's yeah. right. In the middle of summer, it's great to be in Toronto. But yeah, I, yeah. I've been living with Parkinson's now for 10 years, uh, had a long 30 year uh, corporate career. But I've certainly uh, found, I think, my, my passion and my interest now, and that is to share my story, uh, what I went through, 
and and Mark, as you were talking about, you know, your journey and, and, and your vision and what you're doing, I mean, you could have been talking about me because I think that that date of diagnosis and, and the, you know, the, the, the time period immediately before and after that is crucial in, in our journey. And, and for me, it took me about three years to get to a diagnosis. I had, you know, tried physiotherapy, acupuncture, uh, intravenous naturopathic remedies, um, and, and nothing helped. And then I went to see a neurologist and within 30 minutes, he diagnosed me with, with Parkinson's. And I had this big label and, and that day on that decision, I, I did have a, a slight sense of relief because I finally knew what I had, but I had no idea what that label meant. And I immediately um, came home and, and did the worst thing, I, I think, looking back, and that is went onto Google, typed in young adult onset and was overwhelmed by the images that I saw and, and the stories that I read. And I, I denied, it was easier for me at that very day to deny what I had and start living a lie for about two years than deal with, with what I had. And, and that's what I did to the point of, you know, withdrawing from my team, withdrawing from my family, living a life uh, of reclusiveness on my couch until that, that point of acceptance. And I think uh, you know, I'm sure you also, like we all in, in the Parkinson world, one day reach that point of acceptance and then start living. But to get to that point, uh, you know, it's a dark chapter. Parkinson's forces us to do some of the things that COVID has forced the, the, the world to do. After being diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 2012, Larry Linton had to take time to reflect on his life, live with more restrictions, isolation, and lean on others for support, similar to what many people experienced during the pandemic. Parkinson's made me more amenable to those kind of challenges. The pandemic pushed many industries to go virtual, and this has made Linton's life a lot easier. Working from home has allowed us to um, continue with our work without concern. I used to clamp my hands together or sit on my hands so that my clients and my team wouldn't see me shaking. Attending health appointments also became easier. We have the opportunity to see us in those sort of off periods when it comes to Parkinson's, in those times where my medication is not working. Linton says the health industry has made delivery of services easier, but still has a long way to go with access. It took me two years to get diagnosed in, in the normal course. CEO and president of Parkinson Canada agrees and says wait times to see a specialist is an ongoing issue. Those wait times have um, increased. Prior to COVID, there were already long wait times. Dr. Karen Lee says there are around 100,000 Canadians currently living with Parkinson's disease. It was so critical that we build awareness and also support research that better helps understand what Parkinson's is. Lee says we've made progress with medications, physical therapies, and with health and nutrition, but this will only delay symptoms of Parkinson's disease. We need more awareness and support to develop a cure. Charmin Samani, Global News. I think when you're first diagnosed, uh, all kinds of questions come into your mind. Why me? Uh, what did I do wrong? You know, okay. was it nurture nature? Uh, you know, yeah. it was my fault, someone else's fault. It's just natural for na human nature to think those questions. But it took me at least two years to get to the point where I could actually ask myself, why ask why? Right. You can't right. change anything about it. And, and then also, also, why not me? I mean, right. I can teach people something through the challenges I have, and maybe that'll benefit them. So, oh, absolutely, I agree with that. I, I, I think my life has got more purpose now, and uh, living a life more meaningfully, and and uh, reward, you know, much more rewarding life than I did before. But I, what you describe is definitely those five stages of grief to get to that point. I mean. I started running after I was diagnosed. I started drumming um, after I was diagnosed. And in fact, as Ed commented, I became a partner after my diagnosis. So my message is, is that, you know, a diagnosis of a chronic illness may not necessarily mean the end of, of your life. You know, you can still live. And now, 10 years later, it's all about giving back. So I'm very proud that you're representing 
us, uh, you know, tribe members on your uh, talk. I'm involved in, in the Parkinson Canada community here as the chair of the new uh, Parkinson uh, Advisory Council. It's important that our voices band together and, and get out there to help each other and also to educate others who, who don't know about the illness. You know, uh, I don't have a manifested tremor, um, but, but I have the cognitive impairment, yeah. which interrupted my career and has in, now impacting my, my life. But when people look at me, they're all very benevolent and, and tell me I look wonderful. And as, a, as much as I appreciate that, there's such an invisible side to Parkinson's that we've got to keep talking about to educate everybody. Yeah, it's, I think people, when they see someone with Parkinson's, they'll hone in on what seems unusual. Um, right. And it's kind of like looking at an iceberg. You know, you look at the iceberg. Right. Oh, I can see the tip of that iceberg, but most of it's invisible. I can't see it. So it's right. inside things and, and thoughts and, and right. inside processes that started impacting your body. And if they only knew that it impacted your entire physiology from your head to your toe, right. uh, in, in almost every measure way you can think of, they probably I think a little bit more, a little bit more benevolent, as you mentioned, right. a little bit more right. caring and willing to help. So. Thank you guys. Paul, if you're ready, if you could show that uh, video clip uh, and then we'll come back on the other side and we'll talk more. It's not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get back up. And with Parkinson's, we have to keep fighting because, you know, what's the alternative? But with support from, the, from family, friends, and the community, we do get back up and we keep going. We have to. That's wonderful. Love that. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I think, you know, what I, what I put around that is the fact that I've got the condition, but you know, the burden is felt by my family as well. So they carry the same burden of responsibility. And, and when you cast the net wider, you've got the support then of community, uh, you know, in Parkinson Canada. In meeting Mark today, it's another, you know, he's another tribe member and, and, and therefore we, we band together. And, and we've all got our unique journeys but we've got the same common elements throughout it. We've, we've got good senses of humor. I, I try and live my best authentic life as possible and look at the lighter uh, aspects of it as well. And, and, and just have a sense of community and brotherhood and sisterhood in this, in this disease. Because, you know, um, I, I did some research and... This, uh, this Parkinson's is the, is the fastest growing urological disease in the world. And it, it has many similarities and characteristics of a pandemic in its indiscriminate nature of, of affliction. So the more, uh, the more people that band together to educate uh, one another, the, the better. Well, thank you for that, Larry. And thank you, Mark. Um, I am honored to be able to have you guys on the show and we'll do our best to get this thing circulated, uh, probably beginning tomorrow. And uh, I'll, of course, send you the links for your own. So, uh, Mark, thank you very much for your time. I know you're busy, busy. And uh, Larry, it's, it's great to see you. Before yeah. we leave, Larry, tell us about drumming and, and, yeah. how, and how you... Uh, discovered that as as a place to put the uh the uh, and control the energy yes i um i always was a drummer i, I used to drum my mother's furniture to pieces when, we, when i was growing <laughs> up in south africa but then you know life took over with immigration and and uh, marriage and university and all of that and i wasn't drumming but what I did as soon as after I got through that acceptance stage and I started running again, I noticed that the more I ran and the more I did the physical exercise, the better my leg felt. So I decided to turn to drumming to deal with the tremor in my right hand. And I bought an electric drum set um, and I, I bought congas and, and cowbells and, and became, you know, lost in the music and, and, the, and the drumming helped to the point that I was invited to play as a percussionist at, in the uh, famous Toronto Beaches Jazz Festival. 
And I became known as, as the conga guy, not the guy with Parkinson's. So I think my mother would have been proud with that. <laughs> oh, well, that's a positive spin. That's yes, great. Absolutely. That's absolutely. great. All right. So, Mark, can your foundation be involved uh, with the Canada Foundation? I'm sure we can in some way, shape, or form. I'd be anxious to talk to Larry more about that. Yeah, great. Thank you, Mark. I'll, I'll certainly reach out to you. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you, producer Paul, for uh, doing all this at the last second. <laughs> it shows your skill and depth. And thank you. Okay. All right. So we're going to sign off here. And right. uh, Larry Linton, thank you very much. Thank Mark you. Polo, thank you. And we'll get back to you real soon. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks for being on Global TV. It's my honor. Okay. Talk to you soon. Ciao. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day, and stay safe.